I am Patty, 29 years old. My husband Andre, who is one year older than me, and I have been married for two years. After getting married, I quit my job and became a full-time homemaker. My relationship with my in-laws is good, and my brother-in-law Jimmy, who was single, lived with his parents. My husband and I were close to Jimmy as well. He treated me kindly, like a real brother, and was always there to listen and offer advice. When I told my friends that I loved my in-laws, they were surprised, but they were really nice people. I even looked forward to having dinner at my in-laws' house two or three times a month from the day before. So when my brother-in-law decided to get married, I was looking forward to meeting his fiance. I thought that since my brother-in-law had chosen her to marry, she must be a wonderful woman. However, my expectations were betrayed. The fiancé my brother-in-law had brought along was a woman with whom I had a history that I would never forgive. My brother-in-law, an excellent man, graduated from a top-ranking university and worked as a researcher at a large company. On the other hand, my husband, his younger brother, was not very good at studying and got a job right after graduating from high school. But they had always been close, and although they were complete opposites in personality and everything else, they seemed to appreciate each other's good qualities. I always watched with a smile as my husband and his brother shared a friendly laugh with each other even after they grew up. When our marriage was finalized, it was also my brother-in-law who was the most pleased. However, my brother-in-law himself had a desire to get married, but he was having a hard time finding a partner. He went to an all-boys high school and a science-oriented university, so he was not blessed with the opportunity to meet women. My brother-in-law finally decided to get married just before his 35th birthday, much to the delight of my husband and myself. According to my brother-in-law, he met her at a party he was invited to by a friend, and she told him she was six years younger than my brother-in-law, which makes her the same age as me. She approached him aggressively and they started dating. My brother-in-law seemed to think that they should get married after dating for a long time and getting to know each other well, but he decided to propose to her after one year of dating in order to fulfill her wish to get married before she turned 30. I thought it was a very kind decision, like a kind brother-in-law who respects the other person's feelings more than his own. I was curious to know what kind of person the woman would be like. And finally, the day came. My brother-in-law was to bring his fiancé to my parents-in-law's house for a wedding greeting. On the day of the event, my wife and I were invited, and I headed to my in-law's house early in the morning ready to entertain his fiancée with my mother-in-law. My brother-in-law picked her up and arrived at my parents-in-law's house exactly at the appointed time. The intercom rang and my mother-in-law headed to the front door to greet them, so I stayed alone in the kitchen and began preparing drinks. From the living room, I could hear lively conversation. His fiancée must be a cheerful woman, as everyone seemed to be laughing happily. I was excited and went to the living room with a tray of drinks for the number of people. And the moment I entered the room and looked at his fiancé's face to greet her myself. Huh. I stopped in my tracks and almost dropped the tray I was holding in my hand. Next to my brother-in-law sat a woman I would never forget. My hand shakes involuntarily and the glasses on the tray begin to clink. When her eyes met mine, she huffed and quickly looked away. My brother-in-law, noticing my unusual behavior, asked, What's wrong, Patty? I muttered to my brother-in-law, Jimmy, are you really going to marry that woman? They all stared at me with scowling faces. I said in a voice that seemed to echo throughout the room, That is the woman who was trying to kill me. At that moment, the air in the living room, which had been harmonious, suddenly froze. 
His fiancée stared at me, her face pale. My parents-in-law, brother-in-law, and husband all looked at me and his fiancée alternately, as if they had no idea what was going on. My brother-in-law asked me to explain what it all meant, so I put my tray on the table and began to speak slowly. The woman my brother-in-law brought in as his fiancée was Ava, a former co-worker of mine. Ava and I were colleagues and assigned to the same department. There, I was being insidiously harassed by Ava. It seemed that Ava had been treating me as an enemy from the very beginning of my employment with the company. She fell in love at first sight with a male employee right after she joined the company, but for some reason, he seemed to like me more than he liked her, and he often talked to me and asked me out for dinner. However, I was already dating my husband at the time, so I declined all invitations from him, and he never pursued me persistently. However, Ava, who was very assuming, must have thought that I had taken him away from her. She began to overtly dislike me and attack me. I was so annoyed. Until then, I had always gotten along with everyone and lived peacefully without hating or being hated by anyone. I had no idea that I would suddenly be harassed by my colleague when I entered the workforce. Ava's ways were truly shady. She would talk about me behind my back at work on a daily basis open my locker without my permission, and hide my uniform and supplies. She would sometimes try to exclude me from the group by not inviting me out to lunch, or by not calling me alone when she was the host of a drinking party. But I was not intimidated. Ava harassed me for this and that, but I ignored her and went about my work in a nonchalant manner. I knew that if I showed any signs of distress, she would become more and more brazen. And because of my diligent work ethic, I was able to receive high marks in my personnel evaluation. Since I was new, the amount was small, but I was also given a raise. Ava, on the other hand, was not so appreciated at work, probably because she was so preoccupied with harassing me, and she often received warnings from her supervisor. This must have made her hate me more and more. She went beyond the harassment she had been subjecting me to, and started to take it to a whole new level. It happened when I was carrying a package from the warehouse on the second floor of the company to the office on the first floor. Suddenly Ava appeared from inside the warehouse and said she would help me. My work was almost finished. Thanks, I can do it by myself. I turned around, and then… Something pushed me hard on my back, and I stepped off the stairs and tumbled down onto the staircase landing. It was an instantaneous event, and I did not understand what had happened at that moment. I looked up at the top of the stairs and finally understood what had happened. There stood Ava, grinning at me, as if to say, suck it up. Ava pushed me down the stairs. I was mad and wanted to yell at Ava, what the hell are you doing, but the pain in my body was so strong that I ended up cowering on the spot, unable to say anything. I looked around and saw that the papers in the cardboard box were scattered all over the place. My boss noticed the loud noise and flew in to take me to the hospital, but by the time I realized that Ava had disappeared. Fortunately, my injuries were only minor sprains and bruises, and I recovered completely after about a month in the hospital. But one wrong move and I could have been seriously injured, or even worse, I could have lost my life. I could never forgive Ava, but since she and I were the only two people present and there was no evidence that Ava had pushed me, I had no choice but to give up. And after that, Ava did not stop and continued to torment me. I am constitutionally unable to accept alcohol and cannot drink at all, so I always ordered soft drinks even at company parties. If I drank even a drop of alcohol, my whole body would turn red and my head would hurt. However, Ava, in an attempt to somehow get me to drink alcohol, 
would offer me cocktails, claiming they were fruit juice. And she would always do this when no one was looking. My stress was at its limit. I thought it was time to file a complaint with my boss, but right around that time, my husband and I decided to get married and I left the company. As a result, I ended up leaving Ava. I never thought that we would meet again in such a place. After listening to my story carefully, my brother-in-law had a grim look on his face. Then he turned to Ava, his fiancée. Is what she just said true? Ava shook her head, looking blue. Then she glared at me again and said, I don't remember harassing you. If you have proof, show it to me, she said. Did she think she could get away with it at this stage? It seems that now is the time for me to take revenge on my former colleague who tormented me so much. Oh dear. I guess I'm ready for this. I won't tolerate it anymore. I thought I'd never use it again, but I'm glad I kept it just in case. With that I pulled out my phone from my bag and showed it to everyone. I opened it up and showed them an image I had taken a few years ago. It was a picture taken with my phone of an internal email that was used for communication between employees at work. The text was small and hard to read, so everyone squinted at my phone. Then, a few seconds later, my brother-in-law shouted, What the hell is this? What I was photographing was an email that Ava had sent to a colleague. It contained all kinds of bad words about me. A coworker who was fed up with Ava's frequent non-work-related emails secretly told me about them. It was just around the time my marriage was announced at the company, and Ava must have been jealous. The email was lined with dirty words I couldn't bear to look at, such as I hope that ugly bitch will be unhappy and I hope she disappears before she gets married, and so on. I took a picture of the text with my phone and at the same time printed it out on a piece of paper. I still didn't report it to the company because I was already happily getting married and leaving the company, so I didn't care about Ava's harassment. I ended up not using it for a long time and kept it right there on my phone. I didn't think it would serve as evidence now, two years later. Here she is leaving a fine piece of evidence. Brother-in-law exclaims, glaring at Ava. So you're the one who pushed Patty down the stairs. You don't have to rehash such a long time ago now. She raved and plopped down on the table and started crying. But my brother-in-law would not relent. He stood up quickly, looked down at Ava who was bawling and crying, and said one decisive word. I'm breaking off the engagement with you. Oh, no. Ava looked up in a panic. I don't want to break off our engagement. I've already submitted my resignation. I decided to quit my job just so I could be with you. Ava, who originally had low motivation to work, wanted to get married, leave the company, and become a full-time housewife as soon as possible. She must have felt even more impatient when I, her hated rival, got married and left the company before she did. At a party, she met my brother-in-law, who worked for a large company and had a high salary and she must have rushed into marriage, not wanting to miss the chance. She was able to get engaged and submitted her resignation with the expectation that she could now become a graceful housewife. But now, Ava's true nature has been revealed. My brother-in-law continues, trembling with anger. I didn't realize you were such a diabolical woman. Patty is my precious family member. I can't marry a woman who has caused my precious sister pain and hurt her. I will never do anything like that again. So forgive me. Ava looked him up in the eyes and sagged into his arms. Shut up. Get your filthy hands off me. 
My brother-in-law yelled and shook Ava's hand off as hard as he could. I was surprised because I had never seen him this angry. Usually my brother-in-law is calm and kind to everyone. Never the kind of person to yell at people. At the same time, I was happy that my brother-in-law called me his dear sister, and my heart was filled with joy. My parents-in-law and my husband were indeed surprised to see my brother-in-law for the first time. Ava was ranting and raving and crying that she was definitely getting married, but my brother-in-law's feelings were not changed. The celebration turned out to be a terrible one, and my parents-in-law were stunned. In the end, my husband, asked by my brother-in-law, called a cab and Ava was forced to go home alone. In the quiet living room after Ava was gone, we all looked at each other and said, Oh dear. After being dumped by my brother-in-law, Ava's dream of leaving the company was cut short, and she seemed to be in a hurry to ask her supervisor to withdraw her resignation. However, it was turned down without hesitation. I think it was partly because the notice had already been accepted, but I heard from a former colleague who was a good friend of mine that Ava's bad reputation had spread throughout the company and that even if she could return to work, no one would welcome her back. Well, since she had such a vile guts that she harassed me for some trivial reason and pushed me down the stairs, she must have been completely disliked by everyone around her without even realizing it. And Ava resigned as planned, leaving her single and unemployed. Some time later, Ava called me. I didn't even want to hear her voice, but I had no choice but to answer, thinking it might be a call to apologize but that was not the case at all. She wanted to start over with my brother-in-law and wanted me to persuade him to do so. I was stunned and wondered what she was insisting on at this point. Apparently, she had contacted my brother-in-law several times to try to get back together, but she couldn't connect with him, and my parents-in-law wouldn't listen to her at all, so she turned to me for the last time. Patty please let me see Jimmy. When Ava brazenly asked for my help, I told her in no uncertain terms. Have you forgotten what you did? My brother-in-law broke off your engagement and the company dumped you. Don't ever contact us again. Patty, please know that I am sorry. I'm sorry about everything that I did to you. I lost my job and I can't live on my own. Ava cried and finally apologized but it was really too late to be sorry now. I'm sorry, but I don't think anyone will ever again be willing to marry an evil woman like you. Good luck living on your own. With that I hung up the phone and blocked the call. Although Ava had attacked me one-sidedly, I had not retaliated because I had been able to make myself happy, but I still felt frustrated in some part of my heart. Now that I am able to take revenge like this, I finally feel refreshed. I haven't had any contact with Ava since then, but rumor has it that she still can't give up her dream of becoming a full-time housewife and is desperately looking for a marriage without changing jobs. However, as if to fight back, she went out to a party to get married, but as she passed 30 and her appearance deteriorated year by year, her mean personality must have gradually shown on her face. No matter how hard Ava tries to approach them, no man will ever turn his back on her, she says. She is now rolling into her parents' house and chewing on their backs, but it seems that my brother-in-law has informed Ava's parents of the reason for this breakup, and she has been kicked out of her parents' house as well. She has not been heard from since, and I am sure her life has not been good. And my brother-in-law, who felt the pain from this incident. I don't need to get married for a while. He was smiling bitterly, but recently he started a relationship with a woman he met through his work. Unlike Ava, his new girlfriend is not in any hurry to get married, and she is a kind, intelligent woman who gets along well with my brother-in-law. My husband and I were relieved that he had found someone good. I hope that my brother-in-law, who is an important family member, 
We'll be happy this time. So, good day to all of you. How was this story? Please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.